Welcome back to the channel, Dem members. We are on location at the, what are we calling it? The Boracle Bar. Yep. Just wanted to mix things up and not make Aaron drive all the way to see me for a change. A few months ago, I did a video on why I traded in my Hellcat for a Glock 43X. And in that video, I talked about one of the downsides of a 43X being the magazine capacity. A lot of people recommended the Shield Arms 15 round magazines. Other people recommended the PSA dagger magazines. To be honest, we really wanted to do something that was laced with innuendo in this intro. It just wasn't working out. So we're just doing an honest intro. Most people say 10 is more than enough. We're talking 15. We've talked about this, man. What is, like, I have, oh, I have problems. Stop it. <laughs> Get some help. <laughs> Aaron and I both have Glock 43Xs. This is kind of one of your concealed carry guns. This is my backup concealed carry when I'm wearing lighter clothes. And about the time I was doing the video on my 43X was when we discovered the Shield Arms, and you had actually been looking at doing this yourself. Yeah. And it works out really well because Aaron got the Shield Arms magazines and he's done the modification to his Glock, whereas I actually went with the PSA Dagger magazine. Being that between the two of us, we have both examples of the 15 round capacity magazines. We thought that this would be the perfect opportunity to do just a review our experience with both the good and the bad and kind of our own final conclusions at least with this sample size we want to make it clear that we are not being paid to do this video we are not being endorsed by either palmetto state armory or by shield arms this is just our own unbiased experiences aaron why don't you talk about why you went with the shield arms and what it took to get your gun ready for that so i originally was kind of brought to the 43X because of a friend of mine that recommended it to me for a good sub uh, subcompact everyday carry. I was a little concerned about the magazine capacity. I also like to carry a full size handgun around from time to time. Compared to 17, 10 is meh. Mm -hmm. Somebody mentioned the Shield Arms 15 round aftermarket magazine that you could purchase to increase your magazine size and it didn't have like an extension on the bottom where it actually made the magazine longer. So essentially what they did is they got rid of the polymer inside and outside the magazine so that they could make the walls of the magazine a little bit wider and then they were able to stagger the rounds a little bit. The magazine has a plastic follower much like the Glock magazine. But the only other plastic piece that you'll see in it, at least externally, is the cap on the, the bottom. With a plastic receiver on my Glock firearm and a metal magazine, one of the concerns that I've read about online and one that I had myself is the fact that the plastic mag catch that I have on my Glock 43X would be, over time, eroded away by yeah. coming into constant contact and friction with the metal magazine. So I did what was recommended and I ordered a metal mag catch and I replaced that myself, which is actually fairly easy. Um, I watched a YouTube video on how to do it. it. Took me all of about five minutes to remove the spring and replace the mag catch and put the spring back and get it all set back up again. Now I have a metal magazine catch for my metal magazine, which means that it won't erode nearly as fast. I mean, metal on metal over time, it will. But well, so will all on, materials. Polymer on polymer does. It's just going to take a lot of use. Uh, Ever since I ordered them and took them to the range to test them out for a few hours, I have used them as my, my normal magazine in my 43X. I haven't had any issues with it so far, but we'll get into that later. And how much do the Shield Arms magazines cost? They are a little high, uh, more high dollar than some of the other magazines that you'll find. It's $42.99 if you go on Shield Arms website, and if you purchase them from them, uh, they are $42.99 online. To be fair though, I think the 43X magazine to be fair, the 43X magazines, I think are $30, $35. So you're only paying, what, an extra 
seven, yeah. eight. You, you pay a premium for yeah. it, but in my opinion, it's been worth it so far. For a while there, they were very hard to come by. And to be honest, I didn't even know there were other alternatives. That's why in that video, I only talked about the Shield Arms magazines. But then in the comments, mm -hmm. we got a lot of people recommending this. This is the PSA Dagger. I decided after reading through the comments to go with the PSA Dagger because unlike the Shield Arms S15 magazine, the PSA Dagger magazines don't require you to modify your Glock 43X. And that's because whereas the Shield Arms magazine is all metal, the front of the PSA Dagger is composed of polymer. Because the front of the magazine is made of polymer, you don't have to worry about any kind of metal on polymer interaction. You're not gonna have that abnormal wear that you would have with the Shield Arms in a stock 43X. I got to thinking, you know, honestly, that would probably be better because if I don't have to modify my Glock 43X, great. I had buyer's remorse from even buying mine. Mm -hmm. I was like, Man, I wouldn't have even had to buy a replacement magazine release because now you've solved that problem. So I felt like yep. I was throwing money away. Since I'm not modifying a Glock, I can continue to use the standard mm -hmm. 43X magazines. I could have this in my pocket if I only have one right. of these. And I just want to address something that you said, like the whole uh, 10 rounds versus 17. It's an age old argument. And I know there's a lot of data out there that has shown that most self-defense situations over the years are resolved with less than 10 rounds. The more rounds I can have on me without you know, being strapped with magazines, the better. If I have the choice between a gun that can hold seven rounds of nine millimeter versus another gun the exact same size chambered in nine millimeter as well, but it has, let's say 20 rounds, I'm going to go with the 20 round magazine. Absolutely. And it all goes back to just the basic notion of why do I carry? I don't carry a gun because I'm expecting to have a problem. I'm carrying a gun because I want to be prepared in the unfortunate event that something does happen. Sorry, I got off on a long digression there. I, I apologize. There are a couple other differences between the PSA dagger and the shield mag. You'll see on the back here, it doesn't have a round count, whereas on the PSA Dagger, it does. It does have a round counter, but it's on the side, and it oh. only has a 5, 10, and 15. I do like the functionality of the PSA Dagger magazine and the Glock magazine better in the respect of being able to see how many rounds are in the magazine, yeah. but that's a small thing that I'm not necessarily right. married to. As for price, the PSA Dagger magazines are a much more attractive, what did we see? It was like 29, 29 99. 99 So 30 bucks for that versus 42 for the Shield Arms page. <laughs> On paper then, the PSA Dagger magazine looks vastly superior, the much smarter buy mm -hmm. than the Shield Mag. And like you were saying, you were having some buyer's remorse. Absolutely. Well. Of all the jams, I lost track of how many rounds I had. On the channel, on the Phantom Llamas Den, <clears throat> we aren't setting out to smear any company. I know we have the trash or bargain videos and we've had a couple videos where they've been negative. One that was certified trash. I'm not doing that here, especially given the fact that I have a sample size of one. And I told Aaron earlier when we were at the the range, I'm gonna order one more of these. I'm not setting out to bash PSA or shield arms. This is more of just, hey, be aware of this. If what we've experienced is the exception to the rule, it's still something worth noting because there might be a quality control issue. And thank you to the community that called out both the positive and negative experiences on the shield arms magazines as well as the PSA daggers. If you're watching this, if you've had similar issues or if you haven't had any issues whatsoever, please let us know. And that'll really help not only us, but anybody else that sees this video 
it helps build that sample size. And I just want to thank everybody in advance for the constructive comments down below. So Aaron, why don't we start with the shield arms and just why don't you talk about your experience, uh, the few times you've taken it out to the range, your experiences today. I originally was a little bit worried about this purchase because I had seen so many negative reviews about um, failure to feed. I went into it cautious, but I took them to the range and I've been pleasantly surprised. I haven't had any feeding, double feeding, uh, failure to eject issues with the magazine so far. I've probably run at least a few hundred rounds through each of my magazines and I haven't had any issues. Acorn. I'm not worried about you know the, the spring not working. I'm not worried about the follower malfunctioning. I'm not worried about feeding issues. I'm not worried. About, I haven't had any issues where I'm working. I'm on feeling the microaggressions here. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually very optimistic because I got a lot of people recommending the PSA dagger, and they were specifically saying to stay away from the shield arms mag. Yeah, and and I'm not saying this to throw dirt or aspersions at anybody that recommended the PSA dagger. I fully believe that you have had absolutely no problems with yours. Also like Aaron, I have a few hundred rounds just through this magazine alone. And the most common issue that I have found with this magazine to this day is if I load 15 rounds into the magazine, it almost always seems to jam up on that first round. So you wrap the round, fire, and it jams. It's not a failure to extract, it's failing to feed that second round in. But if I loaded 14 rounds in, it was fine. Yeah. So even with that, 14 rounds versus 15, I don't have to modify my gun. I'm still probably going with the PSA dagger. Well, today was an absolute nightmare. <laughs> Feed. Get in here. They're jammed up down there. There we go. That'll get me killed. You Wait. had an expensive Freedom Seed Maraca, is what you yeah, had. <laughs> yeah, so, yes. I think I loaded this magazine four times today. I only had one of those times go off without any flaws. Mm. I can't justify using this magazine as an everyday carry magazine. I'm going to continue just using my 10 round and I haven't been using this because one I haven't had too many rounds through it Glock magazines just work I've never had one of these fail and I'm sure there are people out there that will say ah oh, those Glock magazines are terrible oh, yeah I've seen people post videos of them shooting it and halfway through the mag the the bottom piece just comes off and the spring ejects from the bottom of it I've never experienced wow. that but I know people have issues, yeah. I just, I have not. Any good product, you will find somebody that says, oh, this is garbage. Any bad product out there, you'll have people that say, this is fantastic, I don't know what your problem is. I'm not saying that this is definitively a bad product. I just know that my specific one is not that great. I want to reiterate, I am not trying to dissuade anybody from buying these. However, if you own a PSA dagger, be sure to practice with it. Be sure to train with it. Before if, you carry it. Right. You do not want to be in a self-defense situation that you need to fire multiple rounds and all of a sudden your gun is jammed up. We all know that that's a very real possibility, mm -hmm. but if something's more likely to jam, you want to stay away from that. Ultimately, you have to be comfortable with the equipment, the tools that you use for self-defense. And at this point, I am not at all comfortable using it. I will still take that to the range and I'll continue to break it in because maybe there's just some weird break-in period 
with the PSA dagger. <laughs> You're trying to knock it over now. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> After we both got our 43Xs, uh, we looked into alternatives to try to improve our magazine capacity. And this was something we kind of just stumbled upon and realized that this would be really informational for all of our viewers out there who have seen some of our previous videos in regard to the Hellcat and the 43X and the differences between the two, as well as people who are interested in purchasing a 43X who may have the same concerns that we did about the low magazine capacity. Again, drop a comment down below if you have any positive or negative experiences with either of these magazines. Hell, you know what? If you've had a bad experience with your standard 10 round capacity magazine for your 43X, let us know. And you know what? We'll update this video if anything arises. Uh, we'll do something in the comments or we'll ha even have a follow-up video. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I'm gonna definitely do a follow-up once I have more experience with a second magazine or if just greasiness or whatever helps. And if Aaron starts to have any issues, you'll be sure to let me know. You're not just gonna be like, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing wrong here. If you've made it to this point in the video, Aaron and I, we just wanna say thank you for watching till the end. We've got a ton of stuff coming. We're trying to work out when we're gonna be able to get together in March and then April and you know, month, in the months moving forward. We have so much stuff and I've got a really fun video that I can't believe I get to do in the very near future. If you recall, we set a year end goal for 2024 to 4,000 and I am absolutely confident that we're gonna make it. But if you have watched a lot of our videos, I've been noticing a lot of return viewers, but I've also noticed that most of our viewers are not subscribed. That's great for channel growth, but you're gonna wanna subscribe, you're gonna wanna hit that bell icon to get all the notifications for the future content. It's gonna be awesome. Again, thank you so much for all your support. That's gonna do it for this video, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider hitting the like button, subscribing to the Phantom Llamas Den, follow us over on X, Instagram, follow us on Twitch where we get really rowdy, and as always, don't take a life too seriously, and make it a great day. Bye-bye.